My name is David Summerfleck. For over 20 years, I worked as a digital marketing agency project manager and consultant where I helped business owners go from failure and ruin to reinvesting profits. Now I'm interviewing other experts and professionals to find out what makes them tick and get their thoughts on how you can learn from their experiences and revitalize your life professionally and personally. We cover topics as wide ranging as digital marketing, business innovation, culture, global trends, and ways we can all better channel our creativity. So let's join the discussion. In this episode of the David Summerfleck podcast, we're going to answer a question from a listener. And let's go ahead and listen to the question. Hi, um, this is my third time recording my question. So here it is. Um, How do you advise a remote freelance digital marketer to um, collaborate with other freelance marketers? who are serving the same client, but you're both independents. Uh, I keep running into this issue over and over again, where I am on a remote team that I didn't construct that I'm just sort of placed on. And um, we run into a lot of friction because we're serving a small business owner who doesn't have an internal team, doesn't have a project manager, and has hired a group of freelancers to work together who um, didn't choose each other, basically. So I'd be very curious to hear um, some strategies or some insight about that. Okay. Hi, Karen. Thanks for your question. Uh, I hope I can answer the question um, without meeting you in person. Of course, let's see what we can do. Okay. It sounds to me basically like you're basically experiencing what is a very common, typical freelancer issue. There's no structure, no real direction, no management, very little, if any, uh, efficient communication. And you're in a situation where you don't really know how to work with others who probably have varying degrees of experience that results in some kind of friction. And first of all, to address a little bit more of what you brought up in your question, most if not all freelancers today are going to be remote. That should be a given, especially with COVID out there. Now, the fact that you're an independent That's a given also, at least to me anyway. Uh, The client should have a project manager or PM already picked out for any type of digital marketing project. The client should vet freelancers based on capability to deliver specific outcomes and um, the, the also experience related background and make these decisions based not solely on price. But as I said, if, can they deliver the outcomes I need? Can they solve my problem? Can they do this well? So the client should hire freelancers who expect and ask for a project manager as well, as equally as yourself. The problem, of course, is that most clients for digital marketing are small business owners who really are not going to have marketing experience before they go looking for digital marketing help. So they, in most cases, they don't know who to hire for help. They don't know um, how to be a project manager themselves Um, So they have no team, no project manager or organized structure. So it kind of creates these situations where you're throwing rice at the wall to see what, if anything, will stick. And it's problematic, to say the least. So, you know, when you describe the situation, um, it's something that I've been a part of. 
that I've seen over and over again to varying degrees with small business owners, with even larger enterprise level businesses as well, where the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing and it's just very chaotic. It's a problem for businesses, business owners rather, as well as freelancers, because the business owner isn't solving their pain points. The business owner is not solving the larger problem of needing to attract more customers on a regularly recurring basis. They're not expanding into new markets consistently. They can't ensure that anything tangible is going to materialize as a result of this. And it's a problem for freelancers because you're basically bringing together a group of seemingly disconnected people with varying degrees of experience and putting them together and saying, now you figure out how to solve my problem. And they're looking for leadership and it's just not there. Clients aren't already experts in marketing, so they try do-it-yourself DIY approaches to becoming project managers overnight without previous project management experience or marketing backgrounds. So, you know, either an inexperienced or no project manager is hired or the client becomes a project manager overnight due to lack of experience or unrealistically low budgets and probably unrealistic expectations as well. Freelancers need to find work because obviously you have bills to pay, to pay, so you get embroiled in situations where nobody is in charge and nobody knows what they should be doing, much less how to collaborate. I've been involved in projects like that before as a freelancer um, many, many times over before I became a project manager. Um, very briefly, I can tell you there was one time I remember going to a word camp so for anybody listening who doesn't know what a WordCamp is, these are events hosted by the WordPress Foundation um, or Automatic, the company that owns WordPress. And they're basically big conferences where people who are proficient experts in WordPress of varying degrees get together. And then you also have another group of people who are like amateur um, hobbyists, what have you, with WordPress or, or entrepreneurs or hobbyist business owners, and they get together. So there's these different uh, tracks. And so anyway, I remember one time a lady approached me, and I would often be approached by people at word camps, or you'd, you'd get involved in meetings. And a lady came up to me at a word camp and said, basically, I need to build a, a very large website for a, distri a distributor who's, um, you know, has a distribution business. And uh, so I need to have this very professional website built. The client's budget is around five grand. And uh, she wants to, you know, outsource all, everything involved. Now, when I heard that, I should have run right then and there. But I listened anyway. And she had one group of people in Taiwan in charge of the SEO. She had another group of freelancers who were responsible for writing the content who were in uh, Mexico, I believe. Then she had another group of people who were the website designers who were based in Russia. And then she had another group of people making the video commercials who were in yet another country. And then another group of people who had registered the website with all the local directories all over the place. And what she wanted me to do was to come in and be the project manager back then. And I said, if I'm going to do that, then there's a lot of structure that needs to be applied to this situation because it sounds absolutely insane where you have all these different people speaking different languages, but also in different time zones and also being paid in different forms of, of monetization. So it's going to be complete total chaos with different time zones and languages and, and budgets. And, and then on top of that, you're going to have different cultural norms and ways of responding and communicating and different tools are going to be available 
to in different countries. So it's just not going to work very efficiently at all that way. So I'll be happy to come in as a project manager, but you'd have to pay me more than the freelancers. And I would have to be able to assemble my own team based all within the same time zone and with all, you know, who I know have already been vetted, who can work in a professional, timely manner. And of course, she didn't want to do that. So I just said, well, have a nice day. I saw the red flags blowing in the wind. Um, it's, this is just something that's very, very, very common. And there are several ways that you can handle this. And not all of these ways are going to be ways that you can uh, take on. So one solution is to just walk away from it. And obviously, that's not always an option. You may already have time and money invested in this, or you may be reliant upon this income, or you may have already been involved in it for several months. So that may not work, and it probably won't. Another option is to ask everyone involved for consensus on how to collaborate effectively together, basically become the project manager by default. Another option is to ask who the project manager is in a rhetorical question. In other words, you're feeling it out and try to find out who wants to be the project manager since nobody is. And it's crazy, but that's one approach. Okay. Another possible solution is to do the work asked of you, but remain detached from outcomes and just not worry about collaboration. Do your role, get paid, and leave and wish them well. If there's something that you can put into your portfolio after the fact, great. If not, that's fine. Now, another possible solution going forward would be to screen your clients to find out who is in charge or who their project manager is in advance going forward. Do um, they have previous experience in marketing? And again, for most clients, they won't. Do they have a profound need that they can identify? Do they have a realistic budget? How are they vetting other contractors? How would these other contractors recommended to them? And so on. Asking these questions before agreeing to collaborate. This approach requires coming up with a practiced and tested approach for screening and vetting potential clients before agreeing to work with them on larger projects and in team environments and possibly offering to take over as a project manager and having your own distributed A team available. Clients will need guidance on budget estimations. They'll need to be convinced on why you can take the project and lead it. And they will want assurances that you can solve their problem. And they'll probably ask for guarantees. Um, and which is a whole other episode completely to talk about guarantees. Another solution or part of that solution would be to develop a media kit explaining how you work with distributed teams, what tools you use, and for what purposes, such as Basecamp for collaboration, Dropbox for file storage and sharing. Uh, I think DocuSign is one company for contract signatures, uh, WooCommerce or Equid for e-commerce, and so on. You might also want to look for projects where you can work independently and not as a part of a larger, potentially disorganized team using a very methodical, daily tested approach. And this could be something that I could touch on later. Um, but it, it's basically where you would use websites like Indeed or Media Bistro, where you basically have a list of job sites that you would go to, create accounts for, or create uh, daily alerts for, or weekly alerts, and just have a very systemized way for finding legitimate paying freelance work. And you use that more regularly. So you're not more relying on working in larger, uh, potentially chaotic team environments with no PM. Um, 
But I would also contact established digital marketing project managers through LinkedIn or other sites um, at mid to large agencies and ask them specifically about submitting your resume and outsourcing your services to companies and agencies. Submit your resume with testimonials, references, and case studies. And I would also uh, contact marketing agencies directly for advertised positions more often through sites um, such as, I think there's uh, weworkremotely.com is one. Um, There's another one, WordPress Jobs. And there's several other uh, sites that I can't think of right off the top of my head. But if you contact me, directly on Twitter or on social media, um, I'd be happy to direct you uh, to that list. But I would also contact these agencies as well and also build this super freelance list and begin contacting people for white label work that you do uh, that you could offer for them as well. And for, so for anybody not familiar with the term white label work, that basically refers to doing digital marketing work for marketing agencies where basically the marketing agency puts their name or logo on the work that you do. So you don't get credited for the work. Obviously you get paid, um, but it's more structured. The agency says basically that they did it. This is extremely common. In fact, I, I don't think I ever worked at an agency that um, had the bulk of their team in the house there at their, at their actual location because it's just more uh, cost effective to outsource. So my tips would be to work as if you already were a project manager. Think like a project manager with a list of tools you prefer to use for quick referral have preferred methods for screening clients as well as freelancers who you may collaborate with independently within or outside of larger projects and also have a systemized approach for finding freelance work more often, more regularly. So it's a lot. And yes, it would be more helpful if the business owner would hire a project manager and then let the project manager who is hopefully an experienced digital marketer, go out and find qualified uh, freelancers to work within a distributed team. But the majority of small business owners and business owners, period, are not going to know to do that. That's usually only within the purview of marketing agencies. So... That just seems to be a par for the course in most cases. So I hope this question, uh, rather this answer is helpful to you. If you're listening to this or watching this or, you know, you have a business related question or a freelance question, feel free to go to anchor.fm slash S-O-M-E-R-F-L-E-C-K slash message or Go to dms.blue slash podcast guest, and you can submit your question to me that way. You can also apply to be a guest that way as well. So as far as your question, Karen, the important thing is the need for structure, direction, management, clear and open communication. And you got to ask for that upfront before agreeing to work with these individuals or companies. And if they don't have it, have an organized, deliberate, thought out way to give that situation structure or become the project manager if they do not already have one or recommend a project manager uh, to them which would probably be yourself or, you know, someone else you may know. But you ba- you definitely need structure, direction, management, and open, clear communication. Otherwise, it's just a room of people who don't know what to do and no sense of purpose. 
So I hope that this answer has been helpful to you. So for anybody listening or watching, thank you so much for your time. Don't forget to subscribe and like this as a video or podcast. And if you have a question or want to apply to be a guest, go to dms.blue slash podcast guest. And thank you for your time. Thanks for tuning in to the David Summerfleck podcast. If you would like to apply to be a guest on the podcast or would like to ask a question we may use in a future episode, please go to www.dms.blue slash podcast guest. Thanks again for tuning in and hope to meet you in the next episode.